Welcome to the Social for Brokers podcast. Now, today I have with me a bit of a LinkedIn celeb. If you spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, you'll have seen Mark's face about. Um, and it's actually Mark Waldron from Move. So you might have seen Mark on his Move networking events. And one of the arms of his business that he offers is one that mixes networking and walking. So he obviously named it networking, which was just, he must have been a genius to put those two words together, but I think it works really, really well. So his expertise lie in developing individuals and businesses. And it was interesting. We were having a chat before the podcast started about how you can't have a successful business without looking after yourself and you can't look after yourself without having a successful business. And that's one of the main reasons I wanted to get him on here to talk about how you guys, the listeners, can grow your mortgage business, especially now when it's a bit quieter, the market's gone down a bit, you can start putting some of these principles that Mark's going to talk about today into practice. So Mark, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure. Uh, good to be here, Chris. So I'm excited to chat all things that help people in themselves and in the business and you know whatever we can talk about. Um, if it helps people in some way, then we're winning. That's, what, that's the whole point of doing this. Awesome. Can't wait to get it. We'll get into it. And the first thing is, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the Move branding, which is the company that Mark Mark runs. Perfectly branded smart shirt like that as well. So before we get into it, for anybody that doesn't know who you are, can you give us a bit of a background into how you got to where you are today? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, early years, just where, you know, I didn't do that well in, in like school and college and all that stuff, but I just, I, I was all right, but I ended up getting a job, worked in retail, worked in call centers, all the customer facing things, and obviously on the phones in the call centers, but slowly worked my way up into being like, you know, team leader and manager and stuff, and then a trainer. So even at the age of 21, 22, I ended up being a trainer in a, uh, a call center where we'd get you know, 30, 40 new people, which could be 16-year-olds and 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, people from, you know, not even in the UK, not broken English, and I was training people, so I was really thrown mm -hmm. in the deep end. So I always loved training and helping people, and then eventually I realised, you know, I'm, I've always been good with my hands, building stuff, love doing flat pack furniture, and I, I thought mm -hmm. definitely what, I want to get into construction, I want to do a trade, I want to do something, and, it, you know, when I was about 25, I was really thinking about it and I ended up getting a job in a plumbing suppliers. And I thought if I'm working in a plumbing suppliers, I'm going to see, you know, plumbers and gas engineers, and maybe I'll get a job one day with one of them, uh, which never happened. But, you know, yeah. I made loads of good contacts. Then we had the recession in 2008 and I got let go, ended up in another call center. And then after a while, I thought they definitely need to get a construction now. And by chance, the, the one of the guys who ended up meeting in the gym, had a construction company and cut a long story short, he ended up giving me a chance, work for him, learned a load of stuff. And within about three or four months, he, a big job he had fell through and he said, I'm going to have to let you go, Mark. So I was like, no way. Um, work for someone else for another three or four months, then someone else. So within a year, I'd work for three builders, but picked up so much stuff. I was about mm. 28, 29 at the time. So like, you know, 13, 14 years ago. And in the end, I thought, you know what? I've, I think I, I know enough here to, to do this myself. And I had a convertible, sold that, got a van, and just started out on my own. And um, from doing that, I ended up in 2013 turning what I was doing as a, a joiner and a handyman, turning it into a fully fledged construction company in 2013. Um, so the, the business just evolved after three years to into 2013 to being a construction company. And at that point, joined BNI networking, started mm -hmm. to really learn about the networking side of things, bringing business in, developing a construction company which that had its you know just many tales we could talk about that and mm. trying to employ and have subcontractors working for you who don't work for you but they do but they're not your you're not their boss but mm. you are hard so, to control yeah they're not on your payroll so when you can learn how to lead people in that situation you become really good at leading so learned a lot of skills over the years and then eventually uh the whole time of that since i was 20 started training in the gym Love working out, love being healthy, eating well, living that healthy lifestyle. And I ended up just doing a, a mental toughness program called 75 Hard, which was a bunch of tasks every day. I read 10 pages of a book, do two workouts a day, stick to a diet, no cheap meals, no alcohol, drink three, you know, 3.8 liters of water, bunch of tasks, 
Mm -hmm. And one of them was to, you work, one of the workouts, you had to do it outdoors. So I thought, well, I'll go on a fast paced walk every day, get that bit, you know, mild cardio in. And by doing that, and obviously being active on social media, every day I'm like on my phone, doing stories on Instagram, post on LinkedIn saying, do my daily walk. And it started to become a thing like, Mark Walton's just doing a daily walk. Like he, he's, the, he's the guy who goes out walking on, on camera. And it turned into people saying, can I come along with you? So all those years of B&I in construction, people that I'd networked with said, hey, Mark, can I come on? I need to get out and about. And I can see you out every day. Do you mind if I join you? I said, of course, yeah. And one of the guys that come at the end of the, the walk, but about an hour, he said, you know what? It was just really good that. It was like we were networking, but we were walking. And I just literally jumped <laughs> up and networking. And he, he was sort of thought that sounded really good. And I was like, no, it sounds... Bit stupid that makes no what, what year was this in? Sorry, Mark, to interrupt. So, so at that point, that was 2019, you know, just over okay, four right. years ago. So that's when he uh, started, well. Still running a construction company, but doing that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to put that on LinkedIn, just attract the right type of people because I go at seven in the morning on a Sunday. Not many people are up then, certainly not out walking. So I thought, I'll, invite, I'll just put it out there. If no one turns up, I'm there anyway. It's my lifestyle. But if, if one person turns up, they get me for an hour for free. Like not that I'm charging, mm -hmm. but you know, they get to tap into my mind. I love helping people. If we get a few people, we can all learn from each other. And four people turned up with me. So there was five of us. The week later, there was 13 of us. And then really? that, that, yeah. yeah. So just like that, by again, being on social media, being out there, being known as someone that likes to talk about mindsets and business and networking and getting, you know, markets and all that stuff from a construction point of view, but just from a general point of view as well. I'd always just give tips. Mm -hmm. And that just turned into people seeing me transition into doing this network event called networking. And it, the whole idea was you get to meet people, you get to chat about anything, could be business, could be personal, could be whatever challenge you've got this week. It might just be you, you talk about the football match the day before. It can be anything, but it's it creates good well-being, mental resilience. I love it. You get your steps in and you get to meet people without trying to network. You don't have to pass business cards. I'm literally dressed like this with me, you know, my T-shirts on, my shorts, Bubble coat in the winter, so it's you, you wouldn't even Branded know you next to you wouldn't know if you were next to someone who's a startup or somebody who turns over five million, and there are people mm -hmm. at both in networking. So you know you you wouldn't know. Everyone's almost like this equal playing mm -hmm. field, and you're just there as human beings having a chat. So it's really good. I there's two things I want to break down there, please. If we, we before we move yeah. on to the next bit, that the first one for the listeners is what's happened here is Mark has started going on a walk on a Sunday morning, picked up the phone. And when he talks about Instagram stories or videos, he's just used his front facing camera and chatted away to his audience as he's walking. That's all he's done. He's got not, he hasn't got any fancy equipment. He didn't have an agenda for it. You didn't think it was going to become as big as it is by doing that four years ago. He now coaches people that can turn over 10 to 15 million pound businesses. That's how big Mark's businesses has got purely just from a video, which I think is incredible. Second thing is the biggest hurdle people have from video is that confidence. They can't, people have the, it's, it's hard for people to do a video in their bedroom, let alone when they're walking around a park. So how did you get over that fear, Mark, for doing videos when you're out and about? I'd say, I mean, again, this is a topic we discuss a fair bit on on our move online meetings, but you know, we, we bring business owners together to chat, and this is a topic because every everybody wants to do it, but you, yeah, as you, you're right, like people don't want to get the face on camera, they feel awkward, they don't think they look good, and they put all these like negative biases towards themselves. Um, mm -hmm. the first thing I did. I was finding that if you set up a camera, like right on the table now, if I set up a camera on a tripod and tried to speak to it, that's really hard. Like I wouldn't have, wouldn't advise anybody to do that. Um, if you've got your phone and you're out walking, that sort of helps. But then obviously if you're walking in public, that wouldn't be good because you'd be getting nervous. So if you can go into a put, you know, a park or just somewhere where there's a grassy area or you know down a street that's not busy, that's probably the easiest place just to just to start doing it. Um, like with everything, it gets easier, doesn't it? It's everything gets easier. So these days, I can just again, I've got my phone. Here, I can just turn it on quick and go, guys, and just start speaking. No matter where I am, I can be in the middle of a a, a busy Costa, you know, in the middle of a anywhere. I'll just start speaking, and I'll be pushing past people, just talking as if I'm like when you see a reporter on the TV going through a crowd. How do you, how do you get into that mindset then? Like, 
do you worry what people are going to think of you? How do you get over that? Well, that's you see that that's what people do think. People think, oh, you know, what what are people going to say? They're going to think I'm weird. Ultimately, your mindset there is is focused externally on other people, and you need to. Everybody, this is like for anything. Doesn't matter what industry you're in or what you're trying to do in life. Everything you do needs to be internal. So you've just got to decide you're doing it and not let anything external affect your decision, whether it's people, the weather, an incident, and you know, whatever it may be, you know, it might be really hot outside. It doesn't matter, whatever it is. You if you can be someone that can do what you want to do, regardless of an external factor, an external circumstance, you become a powerhouse because you decide that whatever you're gonna do will get done. And you've almost got to get over yourself and think. What's the whole point of doing social media posts? Because if you're doing it just to get business, that's the wrong reason. But you get business from being visible, adding value. So if you're doing a social media post where you're on a video, you speaking to the camera, hopefully you should be doing something where you're, you're trying to get make people's lives better. So you're giving away your knowledge, tips, something that's worked for you recently. It could be about your industry. It could be something that's totally not your industry. It could just be about, I've just bought a thermal mug. And it, it makes me coffee stay, you know, if you're, if you're like me, you forget you've got a coffee and you're off changing the baby's nappy, then you come yeah. back and my coffee's still hot. These thermal mugs are great. I can just be a tip for someone where they think, God, yeah, I'll have to get myself a thermal mug. Nothing to do with business. But I'm, I'm if I do that, I'm deemed as helpful and I'm memorable. And it's another touch point, isn't it? It's another chance that you're in front of your audience. If you're doing that, now, that, now you're not thinking about other people seeing you or that you might look that good. I mean, you look the way you look. You've always looked that way. It's like when people <laughs> see you in person, they're only seeing the same thing they'd see if you were on a video. You're just mm-hmm. unconscious of yourself. You just need to like, accept who you Good are. Good point, isn't it? But if you're really trying to help other people, now there's a reason why you need to post because you're not doing it for you or whether you like yourself or not or other people, their opinion. You're doing it to generally want to make other people's lives better. And that in itself can be enough motivation to say, I've got to pick that camera up because if I don't do this video or this tip or give this piece of advice of my industry, how many people will have a worse life today because of that? If there's a new, you know, in the mortgage industry, could be rates are about to go up or down and there's something you need to know. By not doing a video, how many people will make the wrong decision because you didn't bother to put the content out? So you've almost got an obligation. Now you, we're going into so deep, it's like you've got like an obligation. This, yeah. You've got an obligation to put that content out and people will love you for it and they don't care what you look like. They're bothered about the information. And what I found in the past is when people do those videos and get over that confidence and say, right, I'm going to do one, what actually happens is the complete opposite because we're we're worried of that feel it, failure and that judgment from the people. What yeah. actually happens is a lot of people admire you for doing it and say, I could never do that, John. I don't know how you've jumped on a video. And John's like... Oh, I thought it was going to be a negative comment on my video. Actually, it's a, it's a comment of admiration. So I really like that, that see your social media content as an obligation. You have to keep your audience updated because you're adding value. Really like that. Okay, so we've touched a bit on social media. In terms of business owners as a whole, and this will apply to mortgage brokers as well, is you have a group of people, don't you, that you have group coaching where you help people. What are the biggest struggles for business owners at the moment that you see? We've got, I mean, there are a lot, it's very varied, like varied the, the issues that people have got. But I think one general one is always marketing. It's always, you know, I'm busy. And then a few weeks later, I've got no clients. You know, they're all mm-hmm. they're gone. So have you kept marketing? Have you kept up your social media? Have you kept checking in with your existing clients to maybe get some more referrals? Have you, and they're like, oh yeah, I got too busy. I stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of the biggest mistakes people make it. You know, you listen to any, any good marketer or any good business owner, they're always marketing. Even if you think of like, think of the massive brands, you know, whether it be McDonald's or Coca-Cola. Now I don't, consume either of those products but i see them all the time so even mm-hmm. though you think mcdonald's are so big they don't need to advertise now and Mac- and coca-cola don't need to advertise but you're walking into your local tesco or sainsbury's or asda there'll be a poster now and again advertising coke they pay to have the coke in the middle of the store like they, they're still trying to market their product even though it's already got past the point of needing marketing so if the big boys are paying a lot of money to to get the the product in front of people Think about how important that is, because when you're making that much money, we're, we're talking, you know, billions. 
you don't do it if you don't need to. You don't spend money on something if it's not needed. So the fact that they're doing it means, you know, they've almost proven the model to say you always market. Now, in in real terms for a business owner, whether you're, you know, self-employed, one-man band, you know, just on your own, no staff, or whether you've got a bigger company, the, the key thing is that you are always in some way spending a percentage of your time marketing, whether that's on social media or whatever marketing practices you do. You might just never do social media and you advertise in the local paper or something and that works for you. But whatever it is, you keep doing it because there's what's the worst case scenario when you keep marketing? You keep getting potential clients coming to you. You keep getting leads. You keep getting people saying, we would like to potentially buy from you. That doesn't mean you need to provide the service. It just means that you've got, you know, if you can maybe take on five new clients and you've got 50 asking you, you can let 45 of them down nicely and just take on the five you want. So you actually get Mm -hmm. better quality clients. So your obligation is to get as many leads as possible so you can pick and choose the best quality ones rather than wanting five, only five come in and you'll probably say yes to all five of them, but maybe two or three are not even the best type of clients you could want. So never, ever stop marketing. And you, it'll probably mm-hmm. alleviate the problem of saying I've got no clients or I've got clients, but they're not the ones I really want to deal with. Mm. And that's the exact market that we're in <laughs> with the cost of living crisis. You obviously look after a cross section of clients, but in the mortgage world, for example, people aren't moving home, people aren't purchasing. So the leads have dried up for mortgage advisors. But what to generate business now, you've got to be thinking six months in the past. What did I do six months ago? Have I uploaded on social media for the last six months? Have I advertised in the local paper, taken out the billboard for the last six months? Because you will see a direct result in your leads today. So even I know it's quiet now and it's 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 hard for you people to listen to this and go, I need to work on my business for six months' time, but start now and you'll reap the, yeah. the benefits in six months. Well, look, well, Chris, that's another good point as well. Like the fact that it, it is everything slowing down, that there's not as much money out there, you know, rates are going up again. Um, it's just, it's not looking good for the next six months to 12 months. But that means that people may not be, have a, or may not have a fully booked working week as in fear and doing, you know, dealing with clients. Mm-hmm. Most business owners' problems is not trying to get new clients, usually there's always a way to get some business in because if you weren't, you wouldn't even be in business. So there's, there's always clients there, even if it's hard yeah. to get. What most businesses don't have, whether it's, again, you're on your own, you're self-employed, or you've got a few staff or lots of staff, is your systems and processes working on things that make your life easier when you are busy. So when you've got the time like now where there are a few hours in a week or maybe half the week you're not busy, that's the perfect business development time. Go and look at what, what has not worked in the past where did the customer complain where did you feel you could have done better what would you like the business to look like in the future where it doesn't couldn't look like make a list of things that you can work on and with that free time which you've now afforded yourself because of the bad situation you can now go and work on your business where when you're up the wall you're like oh i'm non-stop i haven't got time to work and implement these new things in my business but now you're in the perfect place to do it so see it as a blessing in disguise because if you get things in a good place you get your systems and processes in place. You get your HR sorted, your health and safety if you need it, um, your finance, get you know, get, get your zero or your QuickBooks and just get everything in place. When you when those clients do come in, you'll probably manage them even quicker and better. So you'll be more mm-hmm. efficient to make more money and you'll have more capacity. And like you say, use that time to work on the business and marketing is part of that. Go and go and record if you can batch an hour worth of videos and you've got them ready then. For, so then when you're busy and you're up against it, you've got that content ready to put out there. Yeah. I also saw a video from some of your content was talking about growing apples. Can you talk us through what that the premise of that video was? Yeah, I mean, apples, we, we, we actually call it oranges now because my business partner loves orange. So we're like, we call okay. it but it's like, you know, it's a bit like networking is like apples. And in order to get the end results, which let's say, again, you want apples. Well, the apple is the end result and the, or the orange. But to get the apple or the orange, it, it needs to grow. Well, it can't grow out of thin air, so it grows on a tree. So the tree needs to exist. And if the tree is going to exist, well, that means it must have been planted at some point. So now it's got to be a planted tree uh, or a seed, you know, and then you think, well, it can't go into nothing. It's got to go into something. Well, it needs to go into the land. Well, if it's going into the land, the land better be in a good condition that it can actually grow a tree well. 
uh, and fast and as you know as, as good as it can be. So then you get you end up at the start and think, well, if I want something in two years or in six months, there's a bunch of things I've got to do today. And if I want mm-hmm. apples, for instance, I'd have to go and find the land, but I go nurture the land, plant the seed, keep water in it, make sure it grows, look after it. You know, when the weather comes and it's bad, make sure it doesn't fall over or get damaged in the in the lightning storm or whatever. So there's a bunch of things to do to get to the end result. But like networking, all that effort, all that social media post, the building of relationships with people, eventually, once that tree is fully formed and starts to give you apples, you will end up with more apples than what you can cope with. Uh, and that's the equivalent of, if you try and find an apple today, could you go around looking at fields and try and find the odd apple? Probably. But you'll get one or two a day or maybe five or ten. You've got to do the same tomorrow. And then the next day, and you'll always be hunting for apples, uh, which is like hunting for leads every day, like contacting people every day on social media. Or you can do it the other way, where you don't get anything today because you're busy preparing the land, preparing, growing a tree. Eventually, if you put all your efforts into that, you can have this tree giving you all the apples and oranges that you want. And in business terms, that means I call it a vendor. So we've actually made the move name and acronym as well of a networking model, which is me, opener, vendor, end clients. And it works as such like there's me and I want to get clients, the end client, the person that is on the end of the whole process that pays me the money for the service. But mm-hmm. most people miss out the O and the V. Um, me to the end client is direct sales. So DM and someone on LinkedIn and they happen to say, glad you contacted me, Mark. I do need a mortgage, so let's chat. It doesn't happen very often. But if I know that there's someone out there that could pass me the business, that would be, I call them a vendor, which is the V. Um, In old terms, when I was in construction, for me, that would have been an architect. One architect would pick up the phone all the time to me and say, Mark, got another job. Do you want to price it? It's a big job, you know, loft conversion or building a house or an extension. That person like the apple tree, I put all the efforts into that person, helped them over months and months, built a great relationship. Eventually, like a fully formed tree, they're like, there's another one, there's another one. So if people can certainly look for business in one aspect, like direct messaging and doing the marketing, keep doing that to get your business in. But in the background, always be doing the the long game, the planting of the seeds, meeting people, the right people, who is your vendor, and figure out who is it that potentially could pass me a lot of business because they're perfectly placed to have clients that for them, they naturally in the future would need, you know, a mortgage broker to help them out because that person would then recommend you if you've done enough to build a relationship with that person. And then the O in the whole process is who can introduce you to the vendor that's your networking. So you go to, whether it be B and I or coming to move or anywhere where there's human beings, if I'm, if I'm telling people the vendors I want to speak to, that's what mm-hmm. people can, people can like in in the old days. I would always just say, I I love speaking to architects, guys. It was the only thing that come out of my mouth. So and these days it's digital marketing companies or accountants because both those types of people can feed us clients that become either coaching clients or or coming to move online. But by me saying that all the time, people just connect me and that vendor, that specific person or industry or company, and that's the best thing you can do. Because imagine you had ten of the type of people that feed you business all year long. Right now, they would just naturally say, oh, you need a mortgage. Listen, I know the perfect person to call. You get a call from that person and you've got a potential piece of business by doing nothing. But it wasn't nothing. You had to build it up for three months, six months, 12 months with that person to get to the point where they are more comfortable passing the business to you than anybody else. But that's the long game. I love love that. I, th- I think that acronym is perfect for, like you say, from me to end client that's what we all try and do we all try and think right how can i get a lead okay i'm going to go straight to john smith and ask him for a mortgage that's how we do it because it doesn't take as much effort but the success rate is a lot lower i I can really relate to this we're making changes within our business at the moment where i'm kind of thinking right if i sit down on monday and spend four hours on this i can crack it i'm like chris no you cannot crack what you're looking for a business plan for 12 months in four hours. But it's very, very hard to sit down and go think at the beginning, go, right, I'm going to have this nailed by the end of December. It's it's not as sexy as it. It's not as fulfilling to think about that. I think that's why, you you know, the, the, the long game, the build, you know, getting apples or the move model, it's great in theory. 
but it's not something that someone can do on day one of business or if you've got a, a dry spell because you do need the business now. So it's good. They both got to run like or almost concurrent where you, you do that. That strategy always exists. You can always speak to people. You can always mention your vendor if you work out who that is. You can always mention it in a social media post. It's a bit like when you watch a film and you've got product placements like, you know, kind of coke. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like it's like that in your social media post. You've got word placements or vendor placements. So if I, if I was in construction now, I know that every social media post I do has to in some way mention, as you know, guys, we work with architects or tell a story about working with an architect or, you know, never say, please pass me an architect. Just tell stories about the fact that me and architects go together like salt and pepper. It's like simple. informing them. Yeah. So if you're, you can do it in your social media posts, you can do it in your conversations to people in your family. I've had people in my family when I happen to mention architects are really good for me when they've asked me how business is and they've gone, oh yeah, well, next door neighbor's an architect. When I knocked and had the chat with them, I ended up doing business because I mentioned with the keyword, the vendor, whoever that was, which for me at the time was architect. So as a mortgage broker, I think, where can my business come from? And obviously a state, uh, let an agent and a state agency are, are a classic one. But they're just one type. There's, there'll be lots of other businesses out there that will be perfectly placed for someone who may need a mortgage. Um, and you know, to I cut it down, this. think about the the situation of somebody who needs to buy a house. It's either a happy family they want to buy, upgrade, or it's an older couple they want to downgrade. It could be someone who splits up. They, you know, they, they owned one house, they've split up. They now need a, a place each. And they're in a position to buy. So there's lots of scenarios why somebody would need a property. So it's then looking at in their situation, where would they go? And if you've just split up, for instance, it, would would you be going to I don't know marriage guidance as an example? Like you you might do. So a marriage guidance counselor might say, look, sad that you're splitting up, but if you do need to buy a property, I know someone really good that's that gets great mortgages. So the most unlikely person to think of, but they because they're dealing with people who split up potentially. Mm-hmm. Or the great person to say in your, in this new life that you're about to go down as a single person again, you're going to need a property. I know someone really good, and that you've got to, that's just like the people splitting up. You've got to think of the old couple love- who are about to downgrade. What would they be doing? Would they be selling all the stuff? Is there a certain you know if they if they're really really old? Are they did they get involved in age concern UK? I don't know. I start thinking yeah, about thinking about what situation are they in? Who do they have to speak to or spend money with? for their situation and whoever that is in, in the natural sense of, of their situation, I want to know those people because they're the people that have already got the relationship with your potential future customer. Mm-hmm. And they're going to say, look, I know a really good X person or Y person. You need to go and speak to them. So you're now coming recommended from the person who that person. A lot easier to convert with. them. Same way an architect used to recommend me, but mm-hmm. that person was already spend, spending money with the architect. Say, do me some plans, please. You know, 5,000 pounds. So they'll spend them five thousand pounds with someone. You must have already got to a point that you like them enough to spend the money. So when that mm-hmm. person gives you a recommendation for someone, you're probably going to listen to them because you value their opinion. And that's the way you've got to think about who you're. I love the, with. I love this idea of who your vendor is. I've spoken a few times on the podcast about setting up like a local TV channel and becoming the community TV channel, yeah. and that's the exact word I think I've been looking for, but never really quite nailed is interview vendors in the local area. If you interviewed the local head teacher, there might be a hundred members of staff at that school. And then you then become, if you interviewed that head teacher and didn't talk about business, just said, we can help people with mortgages, but what's the school like at the minute? What are you doing? That head teacher has access to all those teachers, but then also all the parents at the PTA and then all the other vendors. And that's the perfect word is the vendor. What vendors can you attract? And I love the way you talked about thinking outside the box, like yeah. your marriage counsellor. That's one that you would never think of. Yeah. Your, your like, local football team coach. That Those yeah, type of oh, people yeah. are invaluable. That's massive. Uh, there's so many, you know, the, I know someone in, um, they, they do, there's a lot of like UW um, people out there. Yes. The, you know, um, utility warehouse. And, you know, for the people that it's right for, it's a great business. And he says, there's loads of people struggling with money right now and they've got a potential to re- to reduce bills, especially single mums or even single, it doesn't have to be a single mum, but parents who are like, might need to save a bit of money. And there's also a business opportunity for them where they can make some money if they've got spare time. So I said, well, they're talking about people with families. So they've all got kids, probably young kids. 
where the people with young kids go. And he's like, well, nurseries. I'm like, exactly. So nurseries and schools. So if you start seeing them as your potential vendor, imagine you know the, the nursery staff or the owner of the nursery really well. They're going to spot the people who are maybe struggling for money in some way and then recommend you and say, look, I know someone, he'll help you with your bills and also potentially there's a business opportunity there. And that's just an mm. example of someone in UW thinking of a children's nursery as a way to get to their potential future customers. Like you don't, it's thinking outside the box. There it is. Yeah. Um, as, put it this way, as a construction um, owner, I used to do a lot of estate agent work or let, letting agents. Um, and the person that introduced me, I would say to more estate agents, letting agents and even architects than anybody else was a guy I network with who does traffic law. So when you get, you know, you're driving fast and you get stopped by the police, he's the type of guy you would ring up. So out of all the people, as a as a construction person, you wouldn't think, I want more business. Let me go and speak to the guy that helps people from getting three points. Like it just doesn't tally. But actually in the real world, he's the guy that is connected to the people I want. So he's the natural, he was the opener to get me to the estate agents. Right, and, and then they would pass me all the business to the end clients. So that was the natural route. That was the path. How did you go from traffic office, traffic um, law to a state agent? How's, how did that link work? Because I was a member of a network group called BNI. I mm. was consistent in there, always talking about either letting agents, not so much estate agents, but letting agents and architects. And over the, the years I was in there that this guy was in, he, he when I was specific and said this specific letting agent or this specific architect, now and again, he just knew them because he was well networked. And he'd go, oh, yeah, I know them, Mark. Oh. I'll introduce you later. It's like spot on. So the most random people could be the best, you know, value givers for you. So you, you can't just make an assumption and think, oh, well, they're, they're not in the property industry. They're not mm. in, in, in my industry, so they can't help. Because the most random people, you just do not know who they're connected to. And that's why you've got to help everyone. You've literally got to see everyone in business and even not in business. Think, how am I helping them? I call it the 10 to 1 rule, where it's like, it's like a game. Can I help someone 10 times before they help me one time? And it's very hard. It's like impossible to do. But just a few times of helping. I'm going to say help. It can be anything that leaves you or leaves leaves you as a person in good light in their mind. So they go, oh, yeah, the nice step. Good guy. That could just be like you post on a, a few of the post uh, social media posts and try and comment and help them with the engagements. Or you call them up and say, you said you wanted X, Y, and Z. I think there's someone good for you to speak to. Let me hook you up. So you're like, you're helping them connect with people. You invite them to an event that you think is going to be good for them. All these things are like you thinking of them and helping them. But each one of them is one time. There's no way you will get to 10 without them trying to help you back. Saying, look, you, you keep like trying that. to help me. How can I help you back? And as long as you know how they can help, where you've got you, either your vendor ready or the type of client you want, as long as you're saying what you want, there's a high chance you'll get something back good from them or at minimum be introduced to someone that might be useful for you. I like that 10 to 1 technique. And that leads us perfectly mm -hmm. into you've got um, a networking event, haven't you? You do these yeah. uh, every quarter, I think you, you said. Is it every quarter? And oh, you've yeah, got so one we... coming up in December for you to Yeah, we do with... move socials. I mean, it, again, I, I love networking. I love meeting new people. But I think that there's a time and a place for every type of networking, if you want to call it that. Most networking is to try and get business coming in. Uh, I think what people often forget is certainly for myself, when I look at where all my business comes from, it comes from the people that feed me the business and it's the people I've got good relationships with. So when I think of networking, my natural instinct is to say, to get business coming in, just have really good relationships with people and know that person on not just a business level, but at a personal level, a social level. So why, why don't we do social network events? And that's what the, I move social Every three months, they're always in Liverpool City Centre. We do a move social. So the next one is the Christmas one on the 8th. Uh, tickets were just launched a few days ago. But uh, we have 70 tickets. We always sell out. And it's just a nice, easy way to go to an event, of an evening, drink on arrival, nice food. Everybody there is either a business owner or a professional of some sort. And you don't need to be dressed in your suit or your blouse and all that. It's not formal. It's very casual. It's Christmas as well. So you can put a Christmas jumper on. Um, but we're not passing business cards out. It's not that type of event. It's just get to know people and just have a nice time. But then after the event, definitely do book in a one-to-one -one with them. Go and book a coffee. Go and see them at their office. But mm -hmm. use the events as the catalyst to meet people 
to then see that as day one of a good relationship where in five years you're helping each other loads and look back and go, we met at that move social, that casual event. And that's the way I like to see networking. When I meet, when I meet someone for the first time or the first couple of times, I think maybe we can help each other in a year, mm-hmm. in six, six months mi- minimum. Like I'm not expecting to help someone today or tomorrow or something. If I can, I will. But I think the biggest value that I will get from any relationship is probably a year away, at least. I love it. And it's that, it's that long game, isn't it? Yeah. But, but right, before we get into the strategy question, um, we like to donate £10 to a charity of your choice. Which charity did you want us to do it for? Uh, definitely your All Floor Inclusion, a guy called Scott Whitney. And uh, Scott's one of our MOVE members, been a member for a couple of years now, maybe longer. And um, he's a guy that literally... Not too long ago, three three years ago or so, he was fully able-bodied, had a, a brain issue, and he lost the use of one of his legs and partly of yes. one of his legs, I think, as well. But he's in a wheelchair now. And it really made him see the world differently. So he thought the world is so inaccessible to many people, whether you've got a physical issue or disability. So we started All For Inclusion, and um, it's a CIC, does really good work. And... Um, He's a good guy, and the, the charity is doing obviously a, a good thing to raise awareness for you know making things more you know uh, accessible. And for yeah, fantastic. We'll make that donation for you. Right, so we're into the strategy question. A lot of people like this question in the podcast. So we're going to pretend that you've moved to the north of Scotland. You've got a laptop, a mobile phone, and an internet connection. What would you do to start generating new business? Uh. First thing, social media all day. Um, I'll be using social media, connecting with the most local people possible, which, again, if in North Scotland, you place like Inverness, and you know there's, there's not a yep. lot of places, but there are still places out there. It might need a bit of traveling. But I'll be looking on LinkedIn. I'll be, I'll be probably very likely start networking up in Scotland. Um, could be net, net hiking. Could be net energy. I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, it could we'll, be, yeah. We'd figure out what it is. But the main thing I would be doing is getting on social media, and forming some sort of event that gets people together. So it starts to create a community with a, a purpose that everyone can buy into. And again, whether it very likely be what I do now, it probably just be move networking because everything I've done in life always comes back down to the same thing. I like helping people. I like seeing people be a bit better, whether it's physically, mentally, in the business, in the relationships, in the way that they're helping other people. But if they're just getting better as a person, I, I feel like I'm winning because uh, it's win-win on both both sides. And I, I get to feel good that I've helped someone and they have a positive impact on the rest of the world. And even usually on me as well, if someone else who's around me is better, they make me become better. So it's like, you, you can't lose. Um, So I'd 100% be doing, you know, basically what I'm doing now, but up in Scotland. And this is where listening to what you spoke about and how the business started, I can't see why a mortgage advisor can't do this themselves not to set up a networking event but just to say look i'm going for a walk every tuesday morning at seven o'clock whatever it might be if anybody wants to join me join me and you could be joined by an estate agent who wants to pick your brain you could be joined by john and sandy smith who wouldn't mind having a chat to you about what the mortgage market's like it could be a chat with an architect and they could build their and eventually somebody will come along that will go do you know what? Actually, I've had a walk with you, Mark, for an hour. I like you. I trust you. I want to do my mortgage with you. And it's a walk that you're doing anyway. I can't. And then you yeah. get the camera out and you do a video and you start building it up on social. I think it would be a really powerful thing for a mortgage broker yeah. to do, to do exactly what you've done. I think that that would work perfectly. I think the, the most simple way for any mortgage broker, though, no matter where you are in the UK or even the world, is think about if you like going for a walk, great. If you don't consider doing it regularly anyway, and maybe use the fact that you start to get out walking as the as the reason for you doing it, and saying, "Look, I need I need to get out more to be physically fit and healthy to ha- create mental resilience, especially if it's raining. We still go anyway. Mm-hmm. Put a bra a brolly up or put the right you know coat on, waterproof. We'd still go anyway. And numbers are usually less on those days, but the people that turn up are the people they've got that attitude to want to win and want to get themselves mm-hmm. out. So even though it's a smaller numbers. It's higher quality human beings who are like, they're the people you want to be around. Um, but regardless of just walking, if there's something else you love, do that. Like, do you like spending an hour or two on at night on, on gaming? 
make a the mortgage broker gaming channel. Yeah, I like that. People and then you game and repeat. There's a reason. There's just a reason why you connect, which is the catalyst. So it's walking, it's gaming, it's I like playing darts in the pub once a week. So it's going to be mortgage broker darts. It doesn't matter, but it's something that makes people want to come. And the fact that they're there means conversations happen, and that means people now get to speak to you, get to know all about what you do, which is the almost what people are trying to do on DMs. When when you get people DMing saying, "Do you mind if we have a chat? I think I've got something to help you with." That's basically getting rid of all that other side of the relationship mm-hmm. building, trying to get straight to the point of let's do business. This other way, it's the same thing, but instead it's saying, "Not bothered about business just yet. Let's just get to know each other." But by the time they get to know you. Now they actually want to do business or they want to help you if they can. So the, the the relationship building in the middle is the key part. Does it take longer? Yeah. But do you get better results from it? Yeah. You know, even before I started really coaching people as as a coach or calling myself a coach, which I still, I suppose I do, but it's like, I don't really talk about that much, but I get coaching clients. It's because people were walking with me and spending time with me, asking the questions of what we're talking about, talking about social media and how do you get business, but how do you network properly, mindset going to gym they would just ask these questions and eventually they're like okay you know enough that i'm prepared to pay you money to coach and they'd say are you a coach it's like no i'm a construction business owner and they were like well can i pay you to coach me because i want to this is great walking but i want to be sat at a table with a pen and paper and i'll pay you money and eventually enough people said that i thought i need to get what's in my head into a, a program like a networking program and that's where the move model come from with the MOVE. I thought, what is my strategy for getting business, which works really well? And I was able to use the letters of move to create that strategy, luckily. Um, and that's how I've ended up where I am. But it all started with me just genuinely wanting to help people and creating something which attracted people to it. So if you, as a mortgage broker, awesome. what can you do to, to attract people to something that they're excited about? Love it. And all this started from a walk, all been on the move. Exactly. And so if people want to get in touch with you or they want to speak to you about coaching, what do you offer and how can you help and where can they get in touch with you, Mark? Yeah, brilliant. Well, I mean, you can get in touch with me on, well, definitely TikTok, Instagram and LinkedIn. They're the three pro, you know, platforms that I'm active on. I go live on TikTok every single morning, literally just there working out. So do, I, I show myself working out because it's important that people see that. I'm talking about being physically and mentally in your best place. I do it every morning uh, to mm-hmm. show like, you know, I'm in good condition physically, good condition mentally, all because of doing that early morning workout. Um, in Instagram, I always put stories on every day. I'm always active on there. And then LinkedIn, again, it's probably one of my favorites. I'm always posting content on there. So people can get me on in any of them. Me, me TikTok and Instagram are Mark underscore underscore waldron just me my first and second name and linkedin again i don't follow you on there i'm gonna go and do it now because i've only seen you on linkedin so so i'm gonna do it now but you tell the guys how can you can help them with what kind of services do you offer yeah so it's it's quite simple whether you're a business owner or professional on day one or you've been going for 20 years and you're turning over 10 20 million we've got something for you so we have networking obviously which is local networking and walking events to liverpool and whittle if you're local, get yourself involved in them. You just go to our website. It's very easy. It just says services. One of them says uh, networking. Then we've got Move Online, which are online Zoom meetings for 90 minutes. We have four a week. And again, it's a nice, easy place to, to check in, to ask for help and talk about the stuff we've been talking about, but with maybe 8, 10, 12 people on a screen. Uh, Move Online costs £15. And it's almost like a group coaching, mentoring session, which if you were to go and pay a coach or you know, a mentor or something, it could cost you hundreds of pounds. You get all a bunch of great business owners and myself on there for £15. So it's very low cost. And then for people who really want to accelerate the business and get, you know, we, we've got someone now started out on their own, lived in the mum's house, working out the bedroom, now employees, 11 people, about to hit a million pounds. And they've got coaching from myself and my business partner, Andrew, for the last nearly three years. Uh, and they said without the coaching from you, I just wouldn't be anywhere where I am. So they're about to hit a million. Got another client, a refrigeration company that turned over 8 million, aiming to get to 12 million, add them 50% within two years. We're working with them, doing really well. And we've got another client that turns over 60 million. So we coach people, either the, the CEO directly or the leadership teams, new leadership training. So anything like that, business-wise, being better, mindset, uh, performance that, that's what we're about and then anyone can inquire for any of those services 
Fantastic. So if you do want to get in touch with Mark, I think LinkedIn or Instagram is probably the best place. Hit him up on there and he'll be able to give you some more information. But Mark, um, given so much value on this podcast, I think you've absolutely smashed that 10 to 1 ratio. So if anybody does want to reach out to Mark, please do. Great bloke. And I'm sure he'll be able to help you with your business. Mark, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity, mate. Uh, Hopefully people get some value from this. And the main thing I want to leave everyone with is learning stuff. We spoke about this before we, we went live, didn't we, Chris? Learning stuff's great. Gaining knowledge is great. But unless you do something with that knowledge, it's it's totally worthless. So not knowledge isn't power. Applied knowledge is power. Like go and do something with at least one tip or nugget that you may have picked up from listening to this episode. And then let us know if it worked. You know, let us know how you've got on. Let us know how you've succeeded from actually taking action. And then that in itself is a social media post to talk about, which then gets you out there and shows that you're a doer. Maybe you get a client from it, but you know, go and shout about it on your social media. Fab. Mark, great tip. Thank you very much. Cheers for coming on. My pleasure.